Hi guys, welcome to Millennial Mirrors, reflections on a millennial life in the Middle East. This is the first episode, so we're super excited. Um, today's episode is titled, uh, So What's This About? with our guest Ghanem Al-Ghanem. Let's get started. Um, today's episode format is going to be a little different than how we usually are going to do things uh, and how things are normally structured. This episode focuses more on why I'm starting the podcast as opposed to a specific topic or a subject that we're, we want to discuss. So I figured rather than me just sitting and talking at you guys for 30 minutes about why I thought this was important or why I'm doing what I'm doing or what have you, uh, I thought it would be more interesting to flip the script and have someone come in and interview me. Um, and so, yeah. So it's, I brought in my friend, Ghanem. Uh, Ghanem and I have known each other for 13 years, I think, at this yeah, point. Yeah, give or take. Yeah, 13 years. Uh, and he's he knows me very well, and he's also one of my most opinionated and argumentative friends. Ever. Which, <laughs> ever, exactly. <laughs> which is why I usually don't actually get into debates or conversations with him on things, but I thought he'd be perfect for uh, for this episode. You know, he's the best person to ask, you know, what the hell am I doing? So, Ghanem, welcome to the podcast. Thank you very much, Mshadi. It's really nice to be here, and uh, shall I can or I can pick your brain this time. <laughs> okay. Yeah, is there anything you want to let people know, or is there anything you want to say before we get started? No, I'm, I'm, I'm just very... In, in, I like the, the idea. I want to know as much as they do, and I have a lot of questions. Okay, so I guess I'm just going to hand it over to you and yeah. let you take over then and ask whatever you want to ask. Uh, the easiest and simplest question is, of course... Uh, why did you start this podcast? Or what made you start this podcast? What made you think that you wanted to take all this effort uh, and do it? So that's a very good question because I don't... Well, first of all, I didn't realize how much of an effort this was going to be <laughs> <laughs> when I first started. Um, it's only later that I kind of realized how much work starting a podcast is. But the the idea came from um, this young woman who I work with. Mm -hmm. And we were... You know, we were having a conversation after a meeting and um, and she was telling me about how she's feeling guilty because, you know, she's feeling pressured to get married, so on and so forth. Now, at that time, she was 25. She's super smart, super intelligent, uh, hard worker, has her own business, which is, you know, doing great on the side. Sure. And yet she was feeling very, very upset about the fact that she felt she was letting her parents down. Um... Now, when I heard this, for me, it was a bit strange. Um, well, not strange. I mean, we hear this all the time. But I guess my question to her was whether or not you decide to get married, that is completely up to you. And whether or not you decide to, you know, to do what, you're, you know, what your parents want you to do is up to you. But the feeling of guilt is the part that upset me because I told her, you're feeling guilty about an obligation which you never kind of agreed to. I asked her, you know, did you have a conversation with your parents and tell them this is the age I want to get married? Did you, um, was there at any point an agreement? And she's like, no. So I'm like, okay, so then whether or not you decide to do it, fine, but there's no reason for you to be feeling guilty. That feeling of guilt is unnecessary. Um, and she was like, huh, I've never thought about, that, about it that way. And, and that's kind of what triggered me, I think, a bit. Because mm -hmm. for someone to be thinking about such a large decision and for someone to be carrying around such heavy emotions without fully kind of analyzing and thinking about why they would go ahead with that decision or not go ahead with that decision or why they're feeling the way they're feeling is very, very strange. And I kind of realized that as a culture, we tend to be raised to think about the collective before the individual um but but Michelle, don't you think in that perspective that we have a feeling because we live in a different standard that we have to give back something to our parents considering any how we lived our lives or how we're living our lives or what we got because of our parents that's why she's feeling guilty so yeah i completely agree we we live and uh, in we live and we get given a lot by our parents and we owe a lot to our parents. But I think what we owe to our parents is a matter of opinion. Mm -hmm. True. And whether or not that is 
the decision of who I'm going to marry or when I'm going to get married or whether that's just a matter of being there for your parents and making sure they're part of your life. I mean, we can have that debate back and forth. And that's why I said, for me, the issue is not whether or not she agrees, you know, to get married or not, because that that is up to her to decide. But the the fact that she didn't kind of think about why she was feeling the way she was feeling. And again, if you if you think about it and you're like, you know what, I feel guilty and I feel guilty because my parents have given me so much. And so I'm going, and that is why I'm feeling guilty, then great. But the fact that she had never oh, asked okay. the question, that is, for me, the big kind of no-no. Okay. Because it is a big decision. No, I get it. You know what I mean? Yes. So so that's what triggered it at the beginning. Okay. Uh, and then I kind of took a like, and it kind of just stayed in the back of my head. And then looking around at my friends and looking around at colleagues at work, I saw there were a lot of things that, and a lot of decisions and that people were making without necessarily thinking about the reasons why they were making them. A lot of people were kind of functioning on autopilot for... uh, Subconsciously. Yeah, subconsciously. uh, Just based on, okay, well, this is what people have always done, so this is what I'm going to do. Or a kind of (laughs) mentality. And so I thought, you know what? No, I want to have a conversation about different subjects that people are not necessarily having conversations about and just see what comes up. As long as you touched on that subject, what subjects do you want to touch on, generally speaking, and specifically? Like, are you going to do, a, uh, let's say, a, an episode and then a sub-episode to that episode if it's big enough? Or are you just going to take it uh, subject by subject? So the framework for the first season is going to be about 10 episodes. Each episode is going to be a different subject. Uh, so I'm going to touch on things such as, um, and you know, that's just the way it is, whether culture is static or whether culture is dynamic and constantly changing, and how do you adapt to, cul- to, to a changing culture, um, if you want to adapt to a changing culture. I have, um, I'm talking about things such as Abe and shame, which is things that, you know, we deal with a lot yeah, on, a uh, daily on, a daily, on a daily basis in our culture. Uh, things such as the definition of success, what you know? What is the definition of success for someone of our age in this region? What do we think of as whether or not we're you know as whether or not you're successful, um, and whether it's monetary or whether there are other factors that you can kind of take a look at. So I mean, there are quite a few different subjects um, that kind of came into mind. There are a lot of more things I want to talk about, but I kind of wanted to just do I guess the ones the main ones I guess the focus on the culture and focus yeah, on the um, region I think for me the focus of this specific season or this specific I guess uh, set of episodes is more about authenticity and purpose and the things that can get in the way of that and the thing and and the things that uh, allow us to kind of find that if that makes sense mm-hmm. well my next question is why millennial mirrors what made you come up with Millennium Millers? So I'm not going to lie. Part of it was just because it sounded good. <laughs> <laughs> well, for me, it's a, like a tongue twister. Yeah. Well, for I, me. Yeah, I mean, it, it is a bit of a tongue twister. I, I agree. Because, uh, I mean, after having recorded a few episode, I, episodes of this, I have realized how difficult it can say, especially when you stick it in the middle <laughs> of a sentence. Um, <laughs> But I mean, millennial A, because of the fact that the generation I'm talking to is our generation and the generation that, you know, that is younger than us, the people that have just graduated university and stuff like that. So I'm talking to, I'm speaking to that generation. Mirrors, just because I think partly because these are a lot of times just my reflections on these subjects and the people that I'm talking to is reflections on these subjects. Um, And partially because I'm not here to give anyone an answer to anything. I want to just kind of hold up a mirror and you take a look if you like what you see and if you're fine with everything then by all means keep moving ahead but at least take a good look and see what's there as opposed to going on autopilot as we said earlier yeah i i do agree with that because sometimes you know peer pressure just makes you feel think or feel like you have to do something yeah Uh, going to family dinners every week or going to um, uh, whatever it is uh, duania or you have to go. It's like a taboo if you don't. That's, I mean, that's the thing. I think as for our generation, for example, if you were born and raised in the West, you graduate university 
and then your parents kind of just kick you out and you're off on your own living your life. You see them on, I don't know, Christmas, Thanksgiving, uh, occasionally. But there is not necessarily that, that feeling of constantly having to be part of that specific world. You can kind of go and create your own world and your own kind of rules and regulations of how you want to live. In the Middle East, you're born and raised into this collective mentality, and then you never leave the collective. You know what I mean? You're, you're, you're kind of conditioned from a very young age. Like you said, you have to go to this diwaniya, you have to go and say, you know, to family dinner, you have to do this, you have to do that. Um, you always have to think of your family, and then your extended family, and then society as a whole, and then blah, blah, blah. And you are not you're not designed or even actually trained to think about yourself first. It's sure. all of those levels before you kind of come in. And I think that that can help. I think there's a lot of strength to be had from the collective. I think being part of a, having your family there and having that support system and having that network to have your back if anything goes wrong is an amazing thing. And so I think for me, this podcast is not necessarily a rejection of that because I think there's a lot of strength in that. I think it's a matter of navigating that while still holding on to yourself, if that makes sense. It makes sense. It's just, it's a hard step. Yeah. Like, um, you have so many family members. Yeah. You stop with one, then you have to, you know, just make it equal with everyone else. And so you feel like, I have to go to my father's house, then I have to go to my her father's house, if yep. it's my wife, and then, you know, so that pressure by itself uh, is steep. Yeah. Uh, I do agree. But this steepness gives comfort. Yep. You have this support system you spoke about. Um, this support system is what's keeping this, in my opinion, this society or this culture alive. Yeah. Uh, you're treading in thin water, in my opinion. So here's the thing. Like you said, you know, you have to go to your father's house and then you have to go to her father's house. And and for some people, that's great. You know, you get to see your cousins and then you get to see her cousins and there's the family gathering and it's fun and the kids are running around. And yeah. if you're getting energy from that and if you're enjoying that, then great, right? But if you've come home from a really hard day of work or you've just come back from a business trip and you arrived this morning and yet there's it's it's that night where you have to go to her father's house or your or your father's house but don't, and you drag yourself there even though you haven't slept properly you haven't spent alone time with your wife you have but because you have to go cuz lazim twajib that's where you need to start up and think you know what can i say no can i look at do i ha- do i differentiate my priorities in this moment And so, like I said, if it's working for you, it's working for you. Great. But it's for those people who it's not working for them, but they're going with it because they feel like there is no other option. And I think, and that, I mean, this is just one example. There are lots of different examples. Yeah, definitely. You know what I mean? And some things will work for you and some things won't. So take what you what works and then learn to navigate what doesn't in a way that doesn't cause you to resent your family or your culture or your or your society and doesn't cause them to reject you at the same time you know what i mean yeah i feel like i want my um funny cousin okay and if that works for you <laughs> great but if you are one of those people that doesn't want to go out and hang with your family because you know what i don't get along with them but i go because of the fact that oh yeah, no, no. you know but i go because of the fact that i feel like that's what my parents taught me i should do yeah then what do you do in that situation or let's remove family from it if let's talk about the the diwaniya situation where you know you have to go to this diwaniya on this day and that diwaniya on this day on this other diwaniya Trust and you know me, if you don't go to the diwaniya for the people in, yeah, <laughs> in other countries, in other countries. But, <laughs> but if you don't go one day they'll be like oh you found new friends there you go you know what i mean and it's just there you end up somehow beholden to so many people and it's you end up the support become, system yeah it's the support system pressuring pe- or peer pressuring us to do or to stay within the groups it's it's tough it's just what you're saying is to change i'm not saying to change huh. 
I'm saying to take a look at myself. Yeah, I'm saying just ask the questions, have the conversation. Don't be on autopilot. If you, you know what? If going to, and again now because it's me and you, we talk about family gatherings and you want yes because we know the situations. But like you know what? If I'm sick of going to like. Five or six different diwanis a week because I feel like I have to wajib flan and I have to like make sure I say hi to this uncle and I have to say hi to you know what I mean. Yeah. If I'm if I don't feel like I actually want to do that and that's not necessarily adding something to my life, I should be allowed to think about a way of approaching my life differently. But it comes with consequences. That's what I'm trying to say. No, yeah. everything comes with consequences. Yeah. <laughs> because of the support system, once you start asking questions, you lose more than you think and sometimes you lose careers sometimes you lose uh, promotions yeah like uh, i know people who just thought the same way or t- try to do their own thing even though they are smart or they are uh, charismatic they have every thing they need every tool they need to succeed in life and they just don't in this region because it is all based on what I think of you on a personal level. Yeah. Regardless uh, of your uh, background, of your... Uh, uh, like, uh, regardless of anything. Yeah. You know, I just don't want to say uh, schooling or, or, or just anything, anything that you can put a standard to, they change just because they don't like how you treat them or how what you say or that you don't even come yeah. to the to the meeting or you don't yeah. even come to the group. So I think we're talking about social obligations which yeah. is just one very small part of everything that is going to be discussed here. But I think with social obligations or with you know with how you define success or whether or with independence or with all those different subjects that we'll, we'll hopefully be covering in future episodes. I think I always say this, I have no answers. I am just here to have conversations. Okay. Take from them what you will. <laughs> Do <with laughs> You want to ruin people's lives. <laughs> <laughs> and and I and that's the thing like for me this was I mean I had a lot of conversations with people before, you know about the the episodes that I'm doing about things like that and people are were saying aren't you worried that you're telling people to burn bridges? And for me, I think it's the complete opposite. opposite yeah, I, I do agree with you in that perspective. I do think what, in my opinion, what I'm trying to understand now is you're trying to enlighten people to ask. Yeah. Not do. You're just t- telling them to think for once in their lives. Because let's take the example of the support system. Okay. Just as an example. I, I was able to take a lot of risks in my career and in in life in general because of the fact that I have a support system. So you can use your support system as an excuse to not do things or you can use your support system as and look at it as something that's confining you or you can look at the fact that you have a support system as a place of empowerment. And the fact that I can go and take the risks that I do in my career or just, you know, decide decide to quit this job and do do something else or whatever is because the fact that I know if at the end of the day things all fall apart there is a support system that I can depend on and so you can use it as a way to propel you forward instead of you thinking of it in a, in a way that holds you back and so I think it's just a, also a matter of trying to get people to see things from different perspectives true true so the, yeah the next question I'm going to ask you the is, next question you're going to ask me is <laughs> who are your target market who are you targeting to to enlighten let's say okay first of all enlighten is a very strong <laughs> word i am not i'm not looking to enlighten anyone hopefully everyone's enlightened enough in their own way uh, i am looking to start conversations that is okay. what i'm trying to do you're looking to start a fire <laughs> no 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 uh, you will never get me say to say that on the record at least okay. <laughs> um who's my target i think my target is anyone who has you know been born and raised in in kind of like our middle eastern culture and who is i would say anywhere from early 20s to late 30s those are kind of the people that off the top of my head when i created this podcast um i was thinking of but like that that is the initial answer to that question having had conversations with multiple people while i was recording 
people are interested that are older than that demographic and people that are interested that are still in college. So I, I would say anyone who is feeling conflicted about their personal lives versus the culture that we are growing up in and n- unsure about how to like navigate things um, or people who are just interested in listening to people have interesting conversations. Well, then the next question comes if you're geographically and demographically looking at this region, why in English? So that's a very good question. <laughs> <laughs> and you know what? Like, I I truly do wish that I could do this in, in Arabic. But let's be honest, my Arabic is when it, is not that strong. And when it comes to work, yes, I can speak Arabic. I know how to talk Arabic in a professional setting. But when it comes to talking about things in a social setting and things like authenticity or purpose, I don't have the vocabulary and it will not jump into my head fast enough for me to be able to have an easy and natural conversation with someone. So if I'm having a different guest on every episode and it's my job to try to get them to to make them feel as comfortable as possible very, very quickly and to have a free-flowing conversation... I would not be able to manage it in Arabic, unfortunately, mm. c- given the subject matter. Okay. Given the subject matter. <laughs> but I will, I mean, like, we're we're uh, we're trying to kind of do some sort of, like, you know, we're going to try to make some short animated videos, have some subtitles thrown on them, at least with the main learning points of each episode and things like that, to just kind of at least try to reach a larger audience. I am... W- if I do decide to do a second season, I am going to give a lot more thought about doing it in Arabic, and even if it is a bit more difficult for me. I think for me, to be quite honest, this season was a lot more about the things that I had to say and the things that I wanted to discuss. And so it's a little more of a selfish <laughs> season, I'm going to be honest. You know what I mean? So yeah. I think I was like, and it's my first time doing a podcast, so I needed to feel a bit more comfortable. Maybe season two, I'll be a bit more comfortable in this kind of setting and I'll relax into Arabic a bit more. But yeah, not for season one. Yeah, because when you said what I understood when you wanted to do, to do it in English, I was like, okay, you might have just slashed half of your viewer base by that. But the idea of having uh, like uh, animated uh, uh, video presentation regarding this yeah. or the episode itself and having it subtitled might uh, might grasp some of those uh, viewers um, but how would you how would you want to structure that so i think i mean i got that question in terms of people were like why aren't you doing an arabic in terms of audience and reach and blah blah and and, and monetization and 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 when it comes to this project and, and Millennial Mirrors and specifically this set of episodes, this was more of a passion project for me. There is no kind of goal of, oh, I want to reach this huge audience mm-hmm. or I want to become like, you know, famous or I want to get like sponsors and I want to do all, you know, I mean, what I mean? So it's it's just more about trying to create some quality, recorded quality conversations um, and put them out into the world. They'll be out on iTunes and YouTube and SoundCloud and and on on my website and stuff like that and and then maybe take some kind of like of the nuggets of learning from each episode and try to kind of make them more shareable on social media like oh, can Instagram. Can I cut you there for a second? Sure. Cuz you've been talking about all these platforms. Yeah. Haven't you ever decided of let's say use other people's platform meaning uh, maybe go to another blogger and and like start rating other bloggers and having an ev- an episode with let's say blogger A, then having another episode with blogger B and using them as a tool or a platform to propel your message. Actually, I have not thought of that. I'll <laughs> take that on board. <laughs> Maybe that'll save me the trouble of having to set all this stuff up myself. Yeah, I was watching going. everything. That's, that's the first thing came up. What? <laughs> yeah, no, I think that... Where were you six months ago? <laughs> <laughs> Maybe you can do that for season two. Bloggers, if you're out there and you want me on your, <laughs> on your blog or your podcast. He is very opinionated, so... If you, want contra- <laughs> <laughs> if you want controversy, you'll get it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, sure. I'm the controversial one. I just at least, 
You know what? <laughs> <laughs> Let's just stop there. <laughs> 13 <laughs> years of friendship. You don't want to ruin it now. Please. Valid point, valid point. Okay. Especially not on air. <laughs> <laughs> so let me flip it. Yeah. Let me okay. flip it. You, as yeah. someone who is part of the demographic, okay. what would you want to see? Or what would you want me to make sure is there in every episode? To be honest, I want, on a personal level, of course, uh, if it is a debate... Mm-hmm. Uh, let's say for the sake of argument it's a debate or a conversation uh, it would ha- it would be nice to have someone like with and someone for definitely mm-hmm. uh, but they should both agree that what's right is right mm. like uh, exactly what the message you told me regarding the girl that you met I do agree she has a choice definitely the, that is but looking at it as because I'm a or I am now a father uh, I do feel like, you know, even though it's her life, my daughter's life, I think I should have some say. I'm not saying I should control her. No, mm. I should have some say. Definitely not in the marriage part. I just don't want her to get married ever. <laughs> She's my baby. <laughs> I don't think anything should be imposed because uh, the backlash from being like imposing anything is just as bad as is. Mm-hmm. Uh, we've all experienced that uh, being millennials in our generation. Uh, everything was imposed previously on us. Uh, that was the mindset. Yeah. Uh, uh, luckily for me, uh, it wasn't a bad experience. Uh, I took the goods from it, but a lot of people didn't. Yeah. Uh, and it ruined their lives because either they were too stubborn uh, to understand that their parents are just looking for their sake. Mm-hmm. Uh, but it did. it did hurt a lot of people. And I do think that if you want to screw up your own life, it's your choice. I really do think that. <laughs> <laughs> I love how the phrasing. If you want to screw up your life, it's your choice. Yeah. But, I mean, I wouldn't recommend it. Zen. <laughs> <laughs> <God. laughs> um, all right. Well, do you have any questions or shall we wrap this up? No, any I more think, interrogations? No, no. I think... Uh, I think it was clear for everyone. Yeah. Uh, I started to understand, looking forward for every subject. Yeah. Uh, especially the controversial ones. Hopefully it'll be the coming episode, if everything goes according to plan. I uh, I do have one question. Yeah. Is it going to be a pure, like, uh, mono conversation or by two people or three people? Or will you be, like, calling people in and asking people to call in? So, will it be like a live thing. Yeah, so this is... None of the episodes that we're doing are going to be live. Um, but what I am going to be doing is I'm going to be asking people to give me, you know, their comments and their feedback wherever they're listening. Um, and then when it comes to the later episodes, uh, we're going to start responding to those comments and those questions so that at least people who have opinions or who have questions will be will be heard and responded to. Uh, but at the moment, for these ten, uh, for these like ten or eleven or however many I end up doing for season one, none of them are going to be live. Um, but but it is something that I have been thinking about doing. Maybe doing like some sort of live kind of uh, episode where people can call in, or doing a live episode at some at an event where people can kind of come and ask whatever questions. But I mean, that's something that requires logistics and planning which i mean i haven't kind of gone there yet. <laughs> i'm just trying to get 10 episodes done Ghanim, okay just yeah. let me get these damn 10 episodes out. knowing you shari, mashallah alaik, mashallah, mashallah, <laughs> but you do things like very systematically and you do it very professionally so i'm sure you can reach more than that uh, i really wish you uh, good luck thank you <laughs> uh, not just for the mic Really, I'm wishing you good luck. It's a it's a nice idea. I think you should, uh, or this generation needs to look at themselves in the mirror because what's happening generally is just uh, either people are pro family or pro. Uh, I want to do my own thing. Yeah. So I think uh, you can cut things in both ways. Yeah. Uh, it's just not just for the strict or for the uh, family based or for the, it can also. Uh, there is a way of mixing it all together and, yeah. and having everything together. You just took it out of my mouth. Yeah. I read your mind. I got you. Yeah, thank you. Thir- 13 years. <laughs> 13 years. <laughs> 13 years. Yeah, 13 years. It just took you 13 years. <laughs> <laughs> so thanks for joining me on this episode, Ranim. It's been great having you. Uh, it's um, been a pleasure. Any final remarks? 
Yeah, well, I'm looking forward to the episode. So. Great. So thanks to everyone for listening. Be sure to subscribe to the podcast if you haven't already on iTunes, SoundCloud, YouTube, or wherever you're listening to this. Uh, we will be releasing a new episode every week. Also, please leave a comment. Let me know what you think. And if you have any questions or if there are any subjects or topics that you think we should cover, you can find me on Twitter and Instagram at Mishari Alonezi. Links are in the de- episode description. And uh, yeah, that's it for our first episode. Bye, guys. Stay safe. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.